Agatha, you are insane. You are insane, girl. Mm, like this scam is terrible, but it's brilliant. Guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are here with the season finale of Agatha All Along. We're on episode nine, which is called Maiden Mother Crone. So, uh, yeah, we're here. Uh, it feels like this went by really quickly, but this has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed this series so much. I think it's just been such a refreshing departure from a lot of the stuff we typically get from Marvel. So, I'm definitely enjoying it. But anyways, I'm hoping that maybe we get more. I don't know. There's no plans announced at the moment, but I definitely wouldn't mind seeing more of this story going into maybe another season. I don't know. We still don't have another WandaVision. So this might be a one and done, but either way, I'm enjoying the ride. Ready to finish it up with this final episode. The last one was super heavy, but basically everybody is off the road that survived and Agatha is dead. At least it looks like she went. So yeah, and Billy figured out that he has way more of a connection to the road than he thought. So let's jump into the episode and find out who the heck was talking to him at the end. But just before we do, you know how it goes. If you'd like to be in the know of when I drop episodes to all the different shows that I'm reacting to, this will be done. But I do react to so many more things and I want you to join me on those if you are interested. So please do hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Very green, very green, we like that. Looks like deciduous trees, so in the north. Ooh, we love a cloak. Who's running? Where are we running to? It's a purple cloak. 1750, wow, you are old, Agatha. She's pregnant. Uh-huh, I don't think you can do a self C-section. I've never heard of biting 11, but it seems effective. Oh. Catherine Hahn probably hated that. <laughs> Unless she really likes sour things. <laughs> no. Rio. No. Oh, well, at least she had a better outfit. So Nicholas died at birth? I was wondering about that, you know. But then how did she get his hair? It cannot be. I mean, he might have had hair. You do this and I will hate you forever. I can offer only time. How much time? Uh, how much? Uh. Is she gone? Guess she can't tell you that. So he was supposed to die at birth. Mm. Honestly, that to me is one of the saddest things to happen to anyone is to lose a child at birth. All that expectation and this hard work and then you don't get to bring your child home. Oh, big eyes. You are made from scratch. Hence the name. It's actually a very beautiful scene. Very beautiful around all that life and nature. Yeah, put, put a boob in that kid's mouth, Aggie. Come on now. He's hungry. I hope. I mean, in the sense of like, I hope it's not anything worse. Sister, come forth. Forest witch. What's that circle? Are we okay? As it be, we have not eaten for days. We. Okay, I'll keep you more sin, kid queen. Okay, so it was a protection circle. Has the baby a name? Join us. Agatha has that I'm up to something face. <laughs> Ugh, she's up to something. Oh God, Agatha, what are you up to? She stole their magic. Aggie. Oh, you like that? Oh, so Nicholas needs yeah, magic to st Oh, guess if he inherited it from his mama. That's how he needs to stay fed. Is this Nikki? Okay, so he did get a few years good. Surely you have kin nearby? Shall we search together? Mm -hmm. Wait, no! Stop! 
No good deed goes unpunished. Your child stole from us. Is it true, boy? Do you shame your mother? <laughs> Not that fake anger. Give me that. Please return it. Mama, why do you kill Yes, bitches? why do we? To survive. Oh, he's been sick his whole life. Poor baby. Could we not stay with the witches and survive with them? Thank you, Nick. No. Why? Why? Hmm. Because then they will try to kill us. Okay, that was just one coven. <laughs> yeah, we sing in the witch's road. You walk this road alone, do you? Windy or witches? I'll be there at the end. Hmm. Don't tell me Agatha created the witch's road. Can't you just make me some food? Right. Witcher, if you're purpose, Mom, you're supposed to cook for me. I cannot. I think he meant for food. Illusions that can control a feeble mind. Cannot make food. But I cannot heal you. I cannot protect you from what's coming. Hmm. And I cannot divine what when she will return. Hmm. When who will return? It's kind of a long story. Mommy's got to really check her dating past. There's a word where all that's Wrong is right. So Nicholas didn't have magic? I guess not. Like, I don't know. I was about to say, is it worse that she had time? But I'm not going to say that. I mean, every moment is precious. Even if it's cut short. But it's definitely a lot. A lot to handle. Oh my god, so the witch's robe wasn't even real. Agatha wasn't lying. She made it up. And Nicholas made it real. That's what I'm picking up right now. <laughs> that note was everything. Very, very well done. Follow me, my friend, to glory at the end. Oh, that little bard in the making. We love it. Take your fee and others. Reward him for his talent. Uh-oh, this redhead's up to something. What you want, girl? Thank you, but no. My mother needs me home. <laughs> I could just look no get a free meal, boy! We can kill more witches tomorrow. I promise. Oh, I see. He didn't want to do the scam. Hold your hand in mine. So this is what Rio meant by giving her special treatment. She gave Agatha time which she doesn't give other people. Ugh. Mmm. Mmm. You know what might help him be healthier is if y'all had a house. What's going on? But I guess she's too scared that she'd get burned out of it. I feel like she's gonna look up and read. Okay. Whew. Damn. Green fire and everything. Oh, he's already gone, isn't he? Right? Because last time we saw this, it was Alice waking up and realizing she was gone. kisses I kind of understand why Rio took him like this Agatha would have fought as we all would Nikki mm. damn I was hoping I was wrong I buried my own heart here with you my child this song is awful. I thought you may know the way. The way to what? The witch's road. The witch's road. You know the ballad, and I'm in great need. Don't tell me Agatha's been stealing magic for centuries using this fake road. Hmm. 
Wow, Agatha, you are the ultimate scammer. You inquire in good faith. Mm, so the way she turned that on, from grieving to scam. First, we must gather a coven. Coven so she could steal their powers. Agatha, you are insane. You are insane, girl. Wow. She get them to blast her and she drain them. Oh, Aggie. Oh, Aggie. Mm, like this scam is terrible, but it's brilliant. Nicholas created an actual road. Holy crap! And Agatha knew from the second, that's why she knew it was Nicholas. Cause she knew the witch's road wasn't real. So she actually let Jen go then. Look at her through the ages running the scam. Lilia, Lilia kept Agatha, she, Lilia literally kept Agatha from doing this in episode three or two. Wow. What is that? She had no idea what that door was. Wow, this rollback is great. This is so good. Exactly. She's like, huh? There's not actually supposed to be a door. <laughs> and he wasn't even in the room. Billy. She's like, you. Billy's imagination is, that's insane. Wall, fourth wall break. It was me. It was you. Boom. Ah! Oh, okay, it's her essence. Wow, her hair got gray. I saw you die. Yeah, and now I'm a ghost. Can you dig it? <laughs> she seems to be loving it. You died. By the way, I did not sacrifice myself for you. You sure? I took a calculated risk. Mm -hmm. Figuring out the rules here, but. The craft in the background. Did I make the road? Did you? Unlike your mother, sorry. You actually did something interesting with your power. You're making fun of me. The ballot was the trick. Huh? It's just Her a incorporeal body is a trick? The road wasn't real until you made it real. It's crazy. Everything we went through. Mm -hmm. It was you. If I made the road, like, like if, I, if I literally made the road, then that means that I... You have a very vivid and slightly twisted imagination. It means that I killed them. Hmm. Unintentionally. I, I'm a murderer. Alice. Well, I killed Alice. Really? Thank you. In the tower. That was her choice. Mrs. Davis. Who? She didn't even- Oh my god! <laughs> I, I, I killed them. They chose My mind them. killed them. You actually do the math on it. You saved a life. What? Jen? Yes, my girl Jen. <gasps> You're the only one who made it. I wish all of you had, but I'm glad at least one of you did. But where the hell are you? Oh, she's just outside Westview. Run and never come back. Jen spin off immediately, I demand it. I was gonna kill them all in my basement on day one. Yeah. If you wanna be a witch, get used to this feeling. Oh, Nicholas. I'll never get used to this. We'll see. Interesting. What are you going to do, Billy? Are you gonna bring her back? Just, okay. It's still there! Huh? Back to the scene of the crime. <laughs> Agatha, please. Just give me what I want and I'll be on my way. Way to where? Hello? I'm right here. You can possess him. Don't do that, please. It's like analog magic. Ooh, someone's getting a bit proficient. Not. 
<laughs> I was about to say, there's nothing analog about that, sis. Wait, Wait. Why I, look? I think he's bringing your ass back. What are you doing? I'm banishing. No. What are you look? Oh, Link uh, I misread that situation entirely. No, you don't, don't get another chance. Time to go toward the lighter into Rio's toxic embrace. <laughs> Thank you, suspended. toxic. Someone had to call it. What you can't do this. You no, did say fun. save your life, Billy, but okay. Five what seconds Luke ago, you all bent out of shape about killing witches. You're already dead. This is true. And uh, Rio killed you, not him. It's mine! Why are you still here? Why won't you just die? Because I can't face him! Damn. Okay, Agatha. She did that. Nicholas. Understandable. He kind of wanted you to stop doing what you were doing. He was the best of you, Agatha. Okay. Aggie said the afterlife ain't gonna slow me down. I'm sure he would forgive you for killing you did. thousands of witches? When you say things like that, that you remind me of him. He was a good kid from the looks of things. You picked it up. Well, I'm a quick study. She is. Maybe being a ghost suits you. Spirit is my guide. I don't know if you should take guidance from Agatha. You make a good team. <sighs> you and me. Let's talk about the woman who died. Maybe not. I do tend to kill my coven members. She, she does. So do I. Damn. Damn, they do have that in common now. Yeah. Close the door. Probably best. Hmm. Thank you. At least you gave them that. One door closes. And another opens. Okay, flexing that telekinesis now. Let's go find Tommy. I can dig this. Oh, that was nice. That was a nice ending. I can accept that. I can accept that. But there's a lot of credits here. Let's see if we've got anything. Oh, wait, hold on. No. Okay, I don't think there is one, guys. I just kind of did a little little squiz through there and it does not look like there's anything else, so. Okay, guys, well, that was quite the end. You know, I gotta give kudos to this show because this is two, well, three back-to-back -back episodes, but really, if you look at episode seven and now this one of showing how, this is my assumption, the, in the writer's room, they kind of started with the end of the story and they had to work backwards, right? So many things now that didn't make sense as we started watching the show were all tied up in episode nine. And that was so beautifully done. I love this. This is such a good, a good example of really being creative with the writing and the storytelling here. We have the flashback of what finally, we finally know what happened to Nicholas. There's been so many stories floating around. The writers wanted to make sure that we had no idea what happened where he was concerned, but the stories where we heard Jen saying, you know that she traded him for the book, right? You know that all these things happen. And it's kind of like, we know Agatha has a horrible reputation. And in this episode, we discovered that a lot of it is valid. But when it came to her son, no, we now know that, I think most of us inferred that Rio took Nicholas, but where the animosity came from, that's where I was like, okay, but if that's, if you knew she was deaf, why would you be mad for doing her job, right? If that's what she's supposed to do. But now we see that, Agatha was pregnant and Nicholas was supposed to die at birth. And as I said in the episode, that is just to me one of the most heartbreaking things in the world for any parent to have to go through is to lose a child so soon. And we see that because Rio loved Agatha, he she broke the rules for her, kind of bent them, I guess, technically. And this is what she meant in the last episode where she said she gave Agatha special treatment. I was like, what do you mean? Like, how did it go? And then Agatha said, no, you didn't, but she did. Actually, Rio didn't lie. She did give Agatha special treatment. From the sounds of things, she didn't just go around handing extended life passes to everybody, right? I mean, she could have done that with Alice if that was the case. Like, okay, I changed my mind. Have another few years. 
She didn't do that. So it was because she loved Agatha that she said, okay, I can only give you time. So she's like, I can't take, I can't take away his fate, but I can give you more time than you're supposed to have. And so we see that Agatha wanted to know when and Rio, I guess, I don't know if it's a rule of being a green witch or if she just knew it was probably better for Agatha not to know. Either way, she didn't tell her. So we see that Agatha got at least, it looks like around eight, nine years with him. And he was sick the entire time, unfortunately. And she always knew that the clock was ticking. And I was saying in the episode that there is, I guess one could almost say like, was it worse to have him grow up knowing that Brio was gonna show up at any moment and that was gonna be it? Or was it better that she had the time? And I personally feel like life is precious no matter what. So yes, even though Nicholas didn't have the most exciting and healthy of lives, he still got to spend time on the planet. And we see that the impact that he had on Agatha, it's it was lifelong. It will, She will never lose what he gave her, which was in my opinion, her humanity, right? After whatever happened with, what caused her mom to turn against her and her coven to turn against her all those years back. Nicholas is, was like the rekindling of her heart. That day he was born, her heart opened up again. And maybe it was just for Nicholas, but all the same, it opened up. And we see that as he got older, he became her conscience, right? As he noticed that she was, well, I mean, I mean, also come on, kind of his conscience too. She was ended up using him as part of her scam to steal magic from whip, witches, which, so I need to understand this. And maybe this is me just being a bit slow, but I always thought that Agatha's ability to steal magic was just like a side effect. Like I feel like she had her own, obviously that is her magic is to take it, but I just figured that she she could do it if, if someone blasted her, but otherwise she could just use her magic. But it's sounding like she needs to be hit with magic. Do you feel me? Like obviously the stuff she was doing with the covens was just her being gratuitous, but it seems like she needed to do it. Like she actually needs to feed off of witches. So that would explain why her mom considered her an abomination because to have a daughter that whose magic can't survive without taking others in their worlds probably felt like, how is that good? But I feel like Agatha, as we saw with Nicholas, she can control it. And especially if you took from like multiple people, she should only, you know what I mean? Between, if there were six witches, she should be able to siphon off a piece off, off, off of all of them to last her for a while that wouldn't have made them feel more than a pinch. So the fact that she'd be draining people like she does, I feel like was just excessive. But anyways, that's a whole other thing. And we, we didn't explore that too much in this series. But either way, we see that she was starting to teach Nicholas to be her, <laughs> be part of her scam to get these women a away from the crowd so she could suck them dry. So understandably, he started to feel bad about it because a lot of these people were genuinely showing concern for him and he was leading them to their death. Like that's, Agatha was a little, that was not okay, Aggie. Like you were messing your kid up pretty bad. And thankfully Nicholas had enough conscience to be like, mom, do we have to keep doing this? Like, can't we learn? Like, cause I think that if Agatha had had a different perspective and I do believe that if Nicholas could have lived, I think he could have eventually convinced his mom to figure out a way to coexist. Like I think Agatha, if she'd been honest and been like, listen guys, this is the way my power works. I need to be blasted or I need to be able to siphon some power from time to time. Would you be willing to be my coven to help me survive? And in exchange, I can protect you in different ways. I really think she could have eventually found a group of women that would have been willing to do that with her. You know what I mean? If she was genuinely a kind and you know what I'm saying? That sisterhood that we heard Lilia talk so much about in her episode. So I think it's just that unfortunately because of the what her mom put in her head at such a young age, that there was something wrong with her, Agatha just, kind of leaned into the whole villain thing. And that's why she does it like she does it. But anyways, coming back to Nicholas, he was basically, I do think he, you know, he was the conscience for her. Like you saw that even though she was telling, oh, this is the way we survive. You got to get used to this feeling if you want to survive. That's what Agatha has been telling herself since she was a child because her mom villainized her from forever. But Nicholas was slowly changing her mind. He was making her feel something. He was pricking at the conscience. She'd long beaten down to survive initially. But now she realized, okay, maybe my son's got a point here. So anyways, it was really beautiful to see the interaction and how even though Agatha was still <laughs> killing witches at that point, she really was only doing what she needed to survive. And her little simple life with her boy was probably the happiest time of her life. And I really love the way they illustrated that. I love the way they sh showed his birth and how she said, I didn't do anything, no spells, no trickery. I created you from scratch. And I just thought that was a beautiful moment there. And I don't know if that's indicating that maybe he didn't have a dad, but I don't think it's the case. But anyway, so yes, yeah, just the fact that she had these beautiful, wonderful moments and that he was just this sweet, innocent, beautiful, bright light in her darkness, I think is just a beautiful way that they illustrated how 
how he affected her and how beautiful that connection was for her. It, it, it also explains why she was so drawn to Billy because Billy is like that. Billy was kind of her conscience through this whole show, kind of pricking and nudging at her like, are you sure? Is that the right thing? Do you feel okay with this? How are you all right with that? Right, and so that very much reminded her of Nicholas and, and obviously Billy had enough of an effect on her emotionally that she was actually moved to a degree to feel bad. Remember I mentioned in the last episode that she was so upset coming out of that trial where Lilia died, where it's like she hasn't cared up until now or seemingly hasn't cared, but I think that was the Billy effect. Between Billy being mad at her for taking Alice's power and then the fact that Lilia sacrificed himself herself for them, like Billy is affecting her. Billy is bringing out that part of her heart and conscience that again, she had beaten down after Nicholas died. So we're gonna get to that though, but Anyways, we see that that's the relationship that they had. And then the song, right? The I love the way they pieced together that the witch's road was never real. It was something that started out as a beautiful song between her and her son, and then a part of a scam. And then when Nicholas died, which she knew was going to happen, and you know, she begrudgingly accepted. I mean, oh, when she when he did go and she said, no, I want more time. Oh, that that hit. That was like, damn. That, that's very real. Anyway, um, we see that when that witch came up immediately afterwards and talked about the witch's road and the scam, Agatha just, the mask coming right back up and oh, she right, right back into her flippant, you know, I don't care about anything mode. And then she kind of threw herself into the life she likely lived before she had Nicholas, right? Just scamming witches, doing what she needs to do to survive and not caring about the morality of it because it was for survival. That was her justification. This is survival. This is how I survive. And again, truly, if that's the way her magic works and she does need to feed off of other witches, she is doing it for survival. But I guess it's more the lying and the deception to get to that place that is questionable. But as I said before, there probably was another way, but she just didn't look for it. But anyway, just kind of seeing that origin was absolutely cool. Like, I love how they've shown that when Billy was talking, what Billy meant in the last episode, and that's kind of what I picked up, but I'm glad it was confirmed. He created the road. The, and again, I wasn't sure about the fact of, you know, that he actually created all of it. I just thought maybe that their version was driven by him versus by all the different witches, right? But it turns out he literally made it real. It was not real. So I love how they showed why Agatha's response to everything going through it was so out there because she was winging it and not because people like you've never been there before. It's true. She has never been on the road before. And even, oh my gosh, I'm just thinking now back to... Even when he says to her, oh, the way you said in your experience on the road, it's, it's, act, it's seeming like you've never been on it. And she gave him this look. Now I realize why it was so incredulous because she was like, bro, this is your road. Like, of course I've never been. <laughs> so many more of the scenes make sense now that the pieces are there. And I feel like I'm gonna have to rewatch the entire series now that we've gotten to the end so that I'm gonna pick up on all the different nuances that have been dropped to get us to this end point. Like this show is brilliant. This show is really, really well written. But anyway, so we see that that's basically what happened. And then they gave us that montage of her. I feel like both mourning, mourning her son's death, but also kind of reveling in all these different covens that she basically fed off of to survive and how this became this, this legend. Cause you think about it, it started off wherever they live, their little corner, their little pocket of them scamming these witches in a certain area. And because she's been doing it since the 1700s, it's turned into global witch lore, <laughs> which is crazy to the point where poor Alice's mom was writing whole songs about it. But anyways, I really love how they showed how Agatha's had an unmistakable mark on the witch community. And that's why I feel like we can't be done with her guys. Like they can't have her gone. But as I said, even though she's technically dead at the moment, this is the Marvel verse. So no one's ever really dead. There's always a way back. And I do think that Billy has every, if he can create an entire material world of a road for them to go through and then kill those women with his mind, with the exception of Alice, then he could absolutely bring them back. I have no doubt he can if he needed to, if or wanted to. But at this point, I think he's gonna leave well enough alone because Rio's been involved and he's already in trouble with her. So anyway. That was brilliant to find out. And um, yeah, poor poor Billy finding out that this is something he's done. That's a heavy, heavy weight. Let's just take a minute and just take in how incredibly heavy it is for Billy to realize that he accidentally killed two women. Like that's, that's insane. Cause he didn't want to, you know, he genuinely did not want to. It was the fact that Agatha at no point in time figured that she should tell Billy that this is his doing, which I don't know if he would have believed it to be fair. 
but she never even tried is my point. I think if she had tried to tell him or maybe then we could have stopped it. But in the end, we know Billy did never, he never wanted those people. He, poor Mrs. Davis, she didn't do anything. And he was devastated, you know, but anyhow, for him to get the weight of knowing that his mind created this thing, first of all, but also that he indirectly took these lives of these women, that's a heavy burden. And we've seen Billy struggle with his morality the entire show. I mentioned that in the last episode between taking William's body to the, the lengths he's willing to go to to get to Tommy. He knows that he's not a morally, he's not a, a completely good person, let's put it that way. On the spectrum, we'd say he's chaotic neutral at the moment, right? And Agatha's definitely chaotic evil, but he is chaotic neutral at the moment. But the point is, he knows that he's selfish. That's what him and Agatha really have in common is that they're both people who are selfish in the sense of what they want even if they know there's possibly some moral gray to attaining it, they're willing to go through that just to get what they want, like the, the deeper things of what they care about. Because I do think that if Agatha could have thought of any way of keeping Nicholas alive that she had access to back then, she would have done it a thousand percent. If Billy had been around all those years ago, she would have found a way to get Billy to somehow, or at least try to get Billy to interfere with Rio. You get my point? So anyways, point is, they do share that common thread of, of darkness, I guess you can say, in that there is a blurry line when it comes to going after what they want and using their abilities to get it. And that's something that Billy shares with his mother as well. Like the fact that she kept saying, I love that now the, the, the line that she said about you and your mom both have a tell. And that's that they make things happen based on what they want and they really don't care about how it affects people. <laughs> but again, Billy did not know he was doing it. So in fairness, actually wait, let me think back. Did Wanda actively know she was doing it? She didn't either. <gasps> That's right. She didn't. Wanda didn't realize she created the world that she was in initially. And then when she did, she eventually didn't want to let go of it. But yeah, she didn't mean to create the Westview anomaly. It just happened out of her grief. Right. So same thing with Billy effectively. His tell is that when he really wants something, he makes it happen and he doesn't think about the consequences that could potentially occur. But again, now that he knows what he can do, much like Wanda, now that he knows he's capable of doing this, it will be the question of whether or not he will control it in the future. I have a sneaking suspicion that he's still going to have that morally gray line, though, especially if he's got Agatha hanging around as his spiritual advisor. Speaking of that, we see that Agatha is gone and she decided to come back to Billy, but for two reasons. One is because she wanted to get her brooch back because we know now the emotional significance it has to her. There is Nicholas's hair in there, but beyond that, that's just something that reminds her of that time in her life. So she came back for it. And she also wanted to explain everything because Billy needed to put all those pieces back together. But also I think it's because she she does love Billy. She's, she's developed a connection to him. That is her Nicholas. That is what could have been in her mind, you know, if, if Nicholas had had a chance to live. So she kind of can't leave this kid alone. She doesn't want to, let's put it that way. And I love how she was telling him, oh, I didn't sacrifice myself for you. It's like, yeah, you did. Heck. <laughs> Yeah, you did. You were right back in the last episode that it should be you. I mean, you've been alive for a long time and you've taken a lot of lives. I think this is your comeuppance. But then we see that Agatha also starts to tell Billy a bit about himself. Basically, like everything I just said, that he's a morally great person. He really keeps trying to differentiate himself from Agatha. And I do think there is still a big difference between him and Agatha in that he's only 16. This is his first bout with using his creation magic into the levels that he did, right? So, and it wasn't intentional, right? He didn't even realize, consciously realize he was doing it. Whereas Agatha consciously has hurt people for centuries, right? There's a big difference there. But again, that, that baseline that they do share, which is that they're not willing to let things like silly old morals or silly old rules get in the way of what they, what it is that they want if they think it's important enough. So, you know, that that's kind of what he, she wanted to let Billy know is that, you know, you're not, you're not as morally superior as you want to be, but you're also not the worst person ever. And they did say that last episode that, you know, you're not, they both told each other that they're not a bad person, which is true. Uh, but anyway, well, mm, Agatha's, I don't know about that with Agatha, but with Billy, at this point, he's not a bad person, but it could go there very quickly if he does not keep his powers in check. Now that he is aware of the full scale 
of what he's capable of doing. So I would say that he's on par with with Wanda of what we saw here of, of making things real, creating worlds and making them interactive and deadly if necessary. And even being able to control people within the world because we saw that even within the road that he created, he also managed to use his telekinesis and mind control. So Billy's OP is my point. Do not sleep on Billy. So anyways, we see that after she tells him about himself, Billy does not like that. So he basically tries to banish her soul. He's like, I don't want you to be around me haunting my ass and reminding me that you're right. Please go. And we see that she does not want to leave because she's scared that if she crosses over, she's going to see her son and she's... She knows that he would not approve of how she effectively bastardized their special little song and hurt many, 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 many more witches after he died. I mean, I do believe Billy in that at this point, he, if he knows his mom, he probably understands, but I understand like that's the one person in the, well, second, now she's got two, but that was the one person whose opinion she actually cared about in this whole world. So understandable. And again, that shows that Agatha is hu more human than people give her cr credit for. She does have a heart. And she does care about people, particularly her son. But anyway, so that's what ends up happening. And we see that she is so desperate to get her, her pendant back and to not be forced into seeing her son before she's ready that she forces herself to become corporeal enough to grab her pin back. So interesting. And I think, again, like I said, in this whole world of we're not sure if, you know, no one's ever actually dead then if she's able to do that, then like she said, she's still trying to figure it out. So maybe there's some perks to not being fully in this world. So anyways, for the time being, she's got her brooch back and um, she basically told Billy that, you know, he reminds her of her son and that's why she's there and that's why she does care for him. And she wants to kind of help him out, like if he'll let her. And so, you know, and it's funny the, the funny, but not when she said, you know, I have a bad habit of, of taking out my coven and Billy's like, yeah, me too. Right, I'm like, please don't make this a habit, Billy. But yes, you know, basically saying they've got that baseline, as I mentioned. So yeah, they're gonna go together and go look for Tommy because that was what this was all about, all this craziness. And also the fact that she brought out that he saved Jen. Thank you, thank you so much for saving Jen. I'm so thankful that they didn't take out all the witches. And we saw that Jen jetted away with her pink magic, which was awesome. I do hope we get to see her again in some capacity. Uh, I love that. I've said it, I would love a spin-off of all these characters, but if Jen's all that we get, then please, I would love that. But digressing. So they're off now. They're off on their own little witch's road to find Tommy and figure out what's going on with him. So I don't think the story is over because Billy's Billy Maximoff is a pretty big character in the Marvel verse. And the, the fact that we introduced him at all here after WandaVision effectively could have wiped them out. I don't think we're done here. So I don't know if we're gonna have a spinoff of just him now. I don't know if we're gonna have another season of Agatha. I don't care, honestly, because I would watch either. <laughs> it can be either one or both, I'm down because this was a lot of fun, guys. This was a really fun series. This, I just, I love the way it was written. I think it was a great departure from typical Marvel lore. I love diverse storytelling. I've been saying this for a while and this is definitely a different type of story and a different drive. Like we're dealing with magic and magic world building versus just your typical Marvel, you know, mutant superhero superpower situation. And again, the masterful way they wove this story with, this big reveal at the end, it was great. I did not see it coming personally. So I, I think it's great for me. Some might've caught on earlier and kudos to you guys. But for me, I had no idea that it had gone this deep with how many layers were in there. So really, really well done. I know there was a lot of people making a lot of predictions when this show started. Oh, it's not going to be good. No one's going to watch it, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, hey, if you didn't watch it, so be it. I mean, I feel like you let, you missed out, but I feel like this show exceeded expectations. I had high expectations anyways, because Katherine Hahn knows what she's doing. And I mean, WandaVision in my opinion was great. So I'm like, if any of the people involved with that are involved with this, I think it's going to be great. And it was. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every single episode. I thought it was great. Episode seven and nine were my favorite by far, just because it put all those pieces together that were kind of jumbled in the beginning. But I love that. I love stories that make you feel, make you think, make you laugh. And I feel like this show did all of those things. So I do hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. Thank you so much for your support, your comments, your interactions, your views. They mean the world to me. And uh, again, we're at the end of the witch's road <laughs> for this particular show. But I do react to all kinds of other things, lots of things to do with Marvel and animes and all kinds of good stuff. So if you are not part of the fan, please do join and find something else hopefully in my catalog that you can join me on or again just stick around for the next thing that pops up in the Marvelverse. I would love 
love to share this journey with you. So thank you so much for that. And for those of you who are already subscribed, thank you again for all your support. And I will see you in the next video.